Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be talking about white matter structural changes in the brains of stranger rapists. So this sounds a little bit intimidating, but really what it means is that I'm going to be talking about how the brains of stranger rapists differ from the average person. First off, what is rape exactly? Well, rape actually encompasses quite a lot of different things. Rape technically is the unlawful sexual act of someone with force or under threat of force against someone who cannot or does not consent. So that's a very broad definition. That includes campus rape, that includes war rape, a lot of different types of things are encompassed in this. But today what we're going to be talking about is stranger rape. Stranger rape accounts for 30% of reported and non-reported estimated rapes and has a higher rate of incarceration than other types of rape. Furthermore, there has been very little study on stranger rape and about how the brains of stranger rapists differ from those of other types of rapists or from normal controls. There's also been very little conversation about the rehabilitation prospects for stranger rapists. So this study, Abnormal White Matter Integrity in Rapists is Indicated by Diffuser Tensor Imaging, is actually the first study done that has looked at structural differences in the brains of rapists. So it's pretty ground groundbreaking because no study has looked at structural differences such as these. So they were asking two main questions. First, which tracts in the brain, if any, had structural differences in the brains of stranger rapists? And for those that did, what kind of structural changes were observed? So their hypothesis was based off of some previous studies that had done research into the brains of other types of criminals, um, specifically psychopaths and violent criminals. So they found that one of the tracks that had been changed in these types of criminals was sexual arousal and behavior tracks. So this includes the thalamus and the internal capsule, which has a number of structures. Their second hypothesis was that reward sorry, not reward, decision-making and morality pathways would be altered in these kinds of rapists as well, including the amygdala, posterior cingulate, medial polar prefrontal cortex, and the angular gyrus. In order to test this hypothesis, they recruited 15 men from Taipei's Veterans Hospital as healthy controls, and 15 men who had, from Taipei's National Prison who had been convicted of stranger rape. Both have the same age and gender. There were also three exclusion criteria. First off, there could be no history of alcohol and drug abuse. Second, there could be no history of neurological or psychiatric um, disorders. And third, there could be no previous or current counseling taking place. The rapist group consisted of men who were serving five to 10 year sentences for raping an adult female stranger. They then took MRI scans of all of these participants, and they did a special type of imaging called diffuser tensor imaging, which is a type of MRI scan that looks specifically at the differences between white matter and gray matter in the brain. Then they did a calculation on this called FA, or fractional anisotropy, which is just a fancy way of saying how much white matter is present in this particular part of the brain. So what exactly is white matter? White matter is the part of your brain that contains myelinated axons of neurons. So basically, it's the part of your brain responsible for fast conduction of material. When we see FA, high FA corresponds to fast processing of information and overactivity and overexcitability. So in the brains of these stranger rapists, we're going to see increased FA in certain regions of the brain. And that means that there's overexcitability and over-response in these regions compared to normal controls. So let's return to these two hypotheses, that the tracks in sexual arousal and behavior and decision-making morality would be altered in stranger rapists. In the tract involved in sexual arousal, they found increased FA in three different regions that were implicated in this pathway. And for decision-making, they also found increased FA in three different regions. This is especially interesting because we would think that a stranger rapist committing a very amoral act, such as stranger rape, would have decreased FA in these areas. However, the hypothesis of Chen et al. was that 
this increase in white matter was an overcompensation for a decreased functionality of these regions. That is, decreased ability to conduct information in these pathways was then overcompensated for by increasing the connectivity and concentration of these white matter tracts without actually increasing their functionality. They did find that a few other regions also had increased white matter concentration, and all of them had p-value that was less than 0 0.0028, which means that there was significant change in all of the regions. So we talked a little bit about morality and arousal and those pathways, but there were a number of other pathways that were also implicated in the study, such as the reward pathway, the aggression pathway, fear conditioning pathway, compulsion pathway, and social processing pathway. When you think about it, it makes sense that there's so many different pathways that were implicated in the study. Because a crime such as stranger rape is really, really different from our normal social processing around courtship behavior. So there must be a number of pathways that are different here to make a person commit a crime that is so different from our norm. There were, however, a few limitations to this study. One is that FA is not a perfect calculation. It's an estimate based off of an image, but it's not a perfect way of saying, this is how concrete our white matter is here, this is how concrete our gray matter is here. Furthermore, is this result really generalizable? We're looking at one specific type of rapist here, which is a stranger rapist. And that, as I mentioned before, is a very small subset of all rapes. Furthermore, this doesn't actually look at the entire population of stranger rapists. We're looking at a group of 15 rapists in Taipei. So it's hard to say that these results can really be applied to the broader population of rapists. In the future, these results can be used for a variety of therapeutic measures. Perhaps the most pro promising is deep brain stimulation. A previous study in OCD patients found that they also had increased white matter in the compulsion tract, which makes sense, it's compulsive disorder. But they also found that deep brain stimulation was successful in reducing the white matter of this tract. Basically, deep brain stimulation is shooting an electromagnetic field to a specific part of the brain in order to reduce the white matter in that area. Given these results, that could be very valuable in reducing the white matter of a number of these different tracts that are overactive in stranger rapists. In addition, future study could be done to look at the genetic and environmental bases of these white matter changes. For example, is there a genetic component or are there environmental cues that trigger this white matter tract change or is it a little bit of both? So in conclusion, there are a lot of structural differences in the brains of stranger rapists, but this is not the entire story. And so we need to look a little bit more at how those tracks develop and what we can do to change them. Thank you.